If you've ever run a home server, you definitely know the feeling. You're just staring at your dashboard, watching that memory usage graph creep up and up and up, and you start to wonder. Yeah, that's the question, isn't it? Which one of my virtual machines is secretly eating up all my resources? Well, it's a classic tech mystery, and it's one that kicked off a really fascinating story online. Okay, let's dive into this. So our story starts with a Proxmox user, Dr. Floyd Pepper, who was running into this exact problem all the time. But instead of deploying some massive, complicated monitoring system, he decided to take a much more direct approach. And this is where the story gets super modern. He used AI assistants, Gemini and Jules, to whip up a script in just 20 minutes. And get this, he was literally debugging and generating code from the sidelines of his kids' soccer game. Sideline DevOps? I mean, what a time to be alive. So he posts his quick and dirty solution, and of course, the internet immediately had opinions. The very first response was a classic case of, well, actually, someone pointed out that, hey, there's already a feature for that built right into the Proxmox user interface. Just as simple button that shows you all the memory usage across your VMs. And our hero's response was just perfectly honest and relatable. I did not know about that feature. You just have to love it. But this simple exchange? Oh, that was just the beginning. The whole thing quickly spiraled into a much, much bigger conversation. Yeah, the thread absolutely exploded into a full-blown debate. And it wasn't just about which button to click anymore. It was about the fundamental philosophy of how you solve problems in a home lab environment. And this is where you can really see two distinct camps forming. On one hand, you have the folks who are all about using the proper tools, you know, set up Grafana, use enterprise systems, do it the right way. But on the other side, you've got the pragmatists arguing, why over-engineer it? A simple script is all you need for a simple problem. This was pretty much the rallying cry of Cambay. And look, their point is totally valid. These tools give you historical data, alerts, beautiful dashboards, the whole package for long-term visibility. They're not wrong. But then Camp B fired right back with this exact sentiment. For a lot of people, setting up a massive monitoring stack feels like, as one user put it, deploying a battleship just to check if your toaster's plugged in. They prefer having a collection of small, custom scripts. It's like duct tape for sysadmins, quick, effective, and it gets the job done without all the overhead. So just as this big philosophical debate was heating up, the entire premise of the original problem got turned completely on its head. The script he wrote revealed something that sent the conversation in a completely new direction. The memory hog. It wasn't a virtual machine. It turns out the high memory usage wasn't a problem at all. It was a feature. This is the big plot twist of the story. The script, which was designed to find a resource hog, instead found the system working perfectly. The real culprit was the ZFS cache, just doing its job exactly as intended. Now, for anyone who's unfamiliar, ZFS is a really popular file system. And one of its key features is using any available unused RAM as a read cache to speed things up. It's a classic gotcha for people new to ZFS. You see that high RAM usage and you start to panic but it's actually a sign of a healthy, optimized system. You could call it aggressively helpful memory usage. And this chart basically shows the reality of the situation. The VMs themselves, they were only using a tiny fraction of the total RAM. A whopping 50% was dedicated to that ZFS cache, making it look like the system was under heavy load when it was actually just optimizing itself for speed. So, mystery solved. But hey, because this is the internet, the conversation did not stop there. The original poster mentioned his Olama AI instance was running on a GPU, and the thread just completely derailed into a side quest about GPU pass-through, kernel updates, and whether an old GTX 960 is still a viable piece of hardware. I mean, that is peak Reddit. So after all the high-level debate about monitoring philosophy and ZFS internals, the conversation landed on what might be the most relatable problem of all for anyone who's ever written a command line script. The script's output was just, well, it was messy. The columns didn't line up at all, and it doesn't matter how brilliant your code is, if the output is ugly, it just feels wrong. This is the true final boss of every quick script. And the solution was so beautifully simple. Just pipe the output through the column minus T command for perfect alignment. It's a small but oh so deeply satisfying victory. 
So after all those twists and turns, what's the real takeaway from this entire saga? Well, when you boil it down, the journey really was the destination. It started with a simple problem, which led to a debate on tooling, a technical revelation about ZFS, and then detours into GPUs and the simple beauty of good formatting. This entire thread is just a perfect snapshot of the home lab experience. It is not always about finding the perfect enterprise grade solution. It's about the process of tinkering, learning, sharing, and getting sidetracked along the way. It's messy and honestly, that's what makes it fun. And that leaves us with a final thought to consider. When you're working on your own projects, what do you value more? Is it about finding that perfectly polished, correct tool for the job, or is there more value in that chaotic, educational, and ultimately more personal journey of just building something yourself?